Think you don't need a welder? A handheld welder? Well, think again too. Pretty cool looking little handheld welders from Do Create coming up next. Hey, if you do a lot of battery repairs, you know, 18650s, uh, new setups, uh, whatever, you like to tinker, having one of these handheld welders is a really good idea. And I'm gonna show you why. It can make your life a lot easier and help you do things a lot quicker. Sounds like a win-win. As always, big keep on testing shout out to Banggood. Thanks so much for sending the little welders in for this review. You guys are just too nice. Here we go looking at both of these spot welding handheld units. On the far right, we have the 756, which has the LED display only. The 757 on the left has that graphical uh, interface. Another bonus is the fact that each of the units ships with the below. Copper needles, uh, one each, well, a set of one each, so you're getting two. You're getting that pen cover, and you're getting some sandpaper as well, some really fine sandpaper to uh, sand down to clean those copper needles when they get dirty because you don't want to have dirty needles when you're spot welding. Uh, you get two meter of nickel roll as well. Two meters, that's a lot. That is a lot uh, of nickel roll. And yeah, it's, it's, it's going to go a long way. And this stuff, you know, normally it's not that cheap, so the fact that they're including it with the... Uh, do creates that's a pretty good deal both units identical in size both have the do create logo here's the one with the led display the other with the graphical display take a look at that in a minute i'm going to put both of these on the charger and uh, get them charged up before we start using them comes with a pretty decent manual as well it gives you the quick lowdown this is the manual for the 757 tells you exactly what you get in your box and the different features. Now, one thing that caught my eye is the fact that the, uh, the 757 has uh, a crazy amount of gears, um, a lot, like 99 gears. And gears are really nothing more than a pulse, an output pulse. So it says this one goes up to 99. Um, the other one goes up to 11, the manual. Um, but, uh, you know, I, at the end of the day, I really don't think there's going to be a big difference. Technically or theoretically, the higher the gear, the stronger the pulse, the stronger the, the power. But uh, uh, either one should suffice. Uh, you can set your delay as well on this unit. And you can have a preheat the whole nine yards. So a lot of customizability here. Obviously, take a good look at the manual before you start using a tool like this, just to make sure you're doing everything right. Something else I want to mention safety goggles yes this is definitely one of the times where i would suggest uh, highly in if you don't have a pair invest in a pair they're not expensive uh, these are 3m probably about 20 25 bucks um you've got one pair of eyes don't lose them so sparks do fly with these units uh, with any handheld uh, spot welder and you never know where they're going to go so even if you wear glasses it's still a good idea to put a pair of safety goggles on covering your eyes completely Unfortunately, they do create the one with the fancy display. The DOA, it's not turning on. It's been charging for hours and it's just, it's just not, it ain't working. It doesn't turn on. Um, it's taken the charge. It looks like uh, we're getting that uh, output and everything, but no matter what I try, it just it doesn't work. So I was debating and I think I'm going to take it apart. Capacitor, I mean, that would be my first, you know, obvious choice, but uh, I don't see any popping or gapping, but I'll definitely have to take that off and uh, see how that's doing. So I took it out. This is the back of the unit here, and uh, there's our display, which hopefully we can see at some point. Right now, I have that underneath the thermal cam. See a couple components that seem warm considering I just turned on it's in charging mode right now already so the component that had the the biggest 
issue on that thermal camera seemed to be this component right here. And that turns out to be the uh, TP4056. Uh, it's a standalone lithium ion battery charger. So kind of important. We're in continuity mode and just looking for shorts. And it looks like we've got one. So I'm probably gonna change this uh, 4056. And I don't have any in stock. Oh, goodness gracious. Uh, let's just see what we're getting here. Now we've got a 3.7 volt battery plugged into the USB. We should be pushing around four volts. And we're coming at 3.9. So yeah, four volts, just under. I'll do a little more uh, diagnostics on this board, but I'm thinking that is the bad boy. Now, how it made it out of the factory like that makes me wonder. The battery that it came with, an 18650, probably, you know, one of these no-name dime a dozen ones. So uh, it worked great for the first week or so. Then after that, just started to suck. And uh, anyway, it's almost useless at this point. Pulled the battery out. And uh, I'm going to put in one of these Samsung 13Bs. I've had really good success with these. They're great batteries. Oh, I love those Samsung 18650s. I am going to stick the new Samsung inside the glue gun. And hopefully we're going to get way better performance. Because I like this. Because it's cordless, you know. It's hard to find a cordless glue gun these days. And uh, I like it. Anyway, let's just turn it on. So to turn it on, we hold down on that power button. And we are in business and, uh, you know, not a bad looking display, honestly. Now this one has 11 gears, I believe. So to select the gears, so we're going to hold down on that little button underneath here. And that's how you change gears. So now we're in sixth gear. Now it's seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 11 gear. So I'm assuming that's highest power. Now to bring it back down to one, Boom, back in first gear. So, kind of cool. I'm going to put it up to, I think, sixth gear. We'll see how this does. Put the plating on. Ooh, it's going to be fun. And that's it. Hold down. And bada boom, bada bing, we have our plating. Now, how is that? Is that strong? Not strong enough. So not enough power. So let's take it up. Oh, let's go all the way. Number 11, high power. All right, try this again. Press down. Boom. Do you see that little spark? Oh, lovely, lovely, lovely. Oh yeah, that's much better, much better. I could rip it off probably, but I'll break the battery because that is in there nice and tight. Awesome, hey, I'm gonna do one more. And all you're doing, you're making contact with those tips. And you're not pressing any buttons, nothing. It's all done automatically. Here we go, oh. Here we go. Oh yeah, sparks are a flying. And I'll trim it a little later, but look at that. Look at that. Easier than soldering or what? Well, I mean, I still have to solder. <laughs> I still have to put the wire back on, but man, much safer, much quicker, much faster, just using that welding tool. Great. All right, let's do the uh, other side, shall we? Here, you, tell you what, you go ahead and do it. I'll watch. Oh, I wish, I wish. Here we go, maximum power. Just put it on top and bada boom. Nice, nice. Gonna do one more. Boom. Lovely, lovely. That ain't going nowhere. I'm gonna clean it up a little bit and stick it in the glue gun. And just trying things out. Nice, nice, nice. Four volts. 
Here are the units side by side, the big honkin' battery with the uh, unit that holds the graphical display. Much bigger battery. Does it equate to longer battery life? Um, I don't know, because it is powering that graphical display. Um, maybe once I get the other one working, I'll test them out and just give you a follow-up. There we are at the tip of the meter, and uh, yeah, they packed a lot. We have a couple of MOSFETs on one and one MOSFET on the other. Um, get them for a closer look in just a second, but generally speaking, uh, setup wise, hey, the same meter side by side. Soldering is so so, definitely hand soldered. Um, not the greatest job, but I mean, it ain't going anywhere, so. Batteries are attached. We have a slate ribbon cable as well. 3.7 volt lithium battery. Fabrication date on both of them are pretty close, about a month apart. Uh, end of last year was when they were manufactured. Okay, let's get in for a closer look here. Here are those two MOSFETs. Those are the end channel MOSFETs, uh, NCE 30H29Ds. And once again, look at the soldering as well, eh? Wow, we've got some exposed areas of uh, copper going on, but you know, that's okay. I think that's copper. Those are the speakers, the piezo buzzers, pretty big. Moving down the line a bit, this is where things get a little bit interesting. We're staring right now at that TP4056 charging module. Uh, the 4056 is a constant current, constant voltage linear charger, and it works with single cell lithium batteries. I think that's what's gone south, the one on top. I think that uh, 4056 has gone south. I've ordered a couple. Originally, I was going to replace them. Uh, I was going to replace the unit, just sort of uh, transplant it from the one that's working to one that isn't, but I thought, nah, I'm not gonna bother. So I've got one in order and uh, we'll see what happens. Here's the LEDs for the manual unit. I do like those LEDs. Look, when they lit up, they are really verbose. I'm not missing anything with that gooey. I really like the LEDs. It it's, tells me everything I need to know. Finally, the charging ports, USB-C, identical for both. Hey, great news, found a replacement TP4056 IC and bada boom bada bing. Mom's your uncle or dad's your uncle. Oh. Anyway, there we go. Graphical display now in full functionality, looking good. And uh, by the way, you can use this as you're charging as well. Kind of cool. Uh, there's our delay. We have the preheat. Everything you get with the manual, obviously a little more enhanced with the graphical. Functionality wise, well, let's try it out on an 18650. Why don't we? Um, pretty good power. I mean, I really didn't see a difference. Uh, between this and the manual uh, mode with the other uh, handheld welder. That being said, make sure you wear those goggles because man, oh man, this thing can really throw some sparks. All in all, great stuff. Closing thoughts, the do create 757-756 mini spot welders. Oh yes, I highly recommend it. These are some great little tools. I haven't used a lot of spot welding in my career, but I've got to say, now that I've got some of these, indispensable for doing those many jobs you save a lot of time certain things are actually safer especially when it comes to batteries they don't want to be soldering batteries all the time or with high heat because it's not a good thing mileage may vary you might want to have the automatic you might want to have the the, the manual honestly i didn't see any difference yes the one with the graphical display is a little nicer to look at but end of day does that really matter to me no in this case i think they both performed admirably Something else I really like is the fact that they charge fairly quickly and you can use these while you're charging. That's awesome. Plus, DoCreate is so kind as to give us a couple of meters of nickel. That comes in handy. You know, that might be more <laughs> enough nickel to last you a long, long time. Maybe forever, depending on what you do or how often you use it. End of the day, this is a steal of a deal. Price-wise, you can't go wrong. We're talking around 25 30 bucks uh, US around 40 Canadian or so dollars hopefully that 757 snap boot was a glitch yeah it should have been caught at the Q&A but it didn't that being said I don't think this is going to be a big problem I really hope not and you know if you buy one leave it in the comments below let me know if you have any issues or any problems the do create 756 757 mini spot welders get a resounding four out of five stars they're both good equally as good in my eyes get one thanks for watching this review everybody till the next one keep on testing <laughs>